Hey, it's IU5, and I just remixed Cheerleader by Porter Robinson. It's not sad. Today I'm about to walk you through the project file and show you some techniques of how I made it. If you haven't heard the full song yet, go have a listen, the link is in the description. There you'll also find a free download for all you producers. So let's get into this. So originally I wasn't even going to do a remix or a flip of this song. I figured everyone else was going to do it. It wasn't until my friend Lomaximus hit me up and sent me a dope mashup of Cheerleader with Seven Lions and Jason Ross and Fiora, See You Again. And that's kind of when everything just clicked for me. Like I heard this as a dubstep drop and I was sold and I was like I just need to make my own so yeah basically what I first did was bought the song then used ultimate vocal remover it is open source it is free and it has these different models that let you AI extract vocals and instrument stems from songs so I extracted the vocals um, it isn't perfect, but I ended up doing some corrective stuff and some masking but overall I think it turned out pretty decently I got just this basic drone going on, and this is Serum uh, using analog flow noise to modulate the detune amounts just to kind of give it a little bit more randomness and inconsistency. I got, and then I got Diva, and this is kind of playing a variation of the melodic hook. I'm using some voice drift and some random LFO to just kind of give like that kind of old retro kind of feeling and then this soft pluck bass just a sub and then i got this dephased saw and this high passed saw a little bit detuned i'm also using this plugin called nor by clev grand it adds even and odd harmonics but uh, it can really help fill out the low end in a way that isn't like saturation it's actually it uses phase distortion and amplitude modulation and i also have this basic operator rise lifter thing. It's really just stereo white noise. And then I am automating the filter. It's a very transparent way to add energy and to bring energy down and back up. Then I have these detuned ice bells, which really are just made with uh, collision. Some reverb and compression. So they're really basic. And this is the main lead. Uh, this is a combination of a couple different things. I am using Serum. And as the detune increases, the cutoff increases, it kind of gives that noisy kind of chaos sound. And this is made with square waves. And I'm using pulse width modulation. So it's really simple when it's, when it's kind of closed and not detuned, uh, and then it will get uh, much more aggressive and, and louder later. But basically, a noise oscillator is modulating the chorus pitch, as well as Chaos One is modulating chorus pitch, and kind of gives it that fuzzy, noisy, airy kind of sound. And then there's also this zebra patch, which is much smoother. This is something that uh, is actually designed by Crystal Skies that we used in our collab, Cataclysm. Basically, this lead is kind of establishing a motific rhythm. And then this is the pre-chorus, which is basically like the rise. I have this amen break, which is being filtered by hybrid reverb, kind of widening it up. And then I'm also using EQ3 to kind of filter that. And then these chords, these are actually derived from the drop chords, but these are made very similarly as the other chords. They are saw waves though, um, and then noise and chaos modulated as well. You can also check out my tutorial, Chaos Modulation Super Saw Killer. I am using FabFilter Saturn uh, to kind of bring the vocal down and make it a little bit more lo-fi and grungy, as opposed to... I partly did this to mask the AI um, isolation artifacts, but uh, I think it also is kind of an appropriate vibe. It kind of like brings the highs down so that when the drop hits, it's really a serious payoff. I'm using smooth amp. And here's the drop. It's not Cool, let's take this apart. So I got this snare, it's made with two layers, this top layer and this thicker layer. The cymbals are still the same vocoder, but I'm also using these crashes. 
the way I'm arranging this is I'm putting the crashes on the main kicks. So on the downbeat, the four, downbeat, and then this beat is the offbeat of the four. Um, and the reason why that I created this kind of rhythm, for one, it was, it's partially inspired by the Seven Lions and Jason Ross song, but it also follows the emphasis of the syllables in, in the vocal. Because I know the no is a very like climactic note that is sung. It's all, it's like the highest note that's sung as well. And so uh, I figured that it would sound good to just really emphasize that um, and kind of have this the beat offset to align with it. And uh, yeah, I think it's just kind of a unique rhythm. I got this bass pad right here. This is really, this is doing a lot. It's holding down a lot of like the fullness and movement of the, of the song. So this is in two layers. This is a bass pad, basically just made with, yeah, it's a deface square wave, and it's a deface saw wave, kind of combined. And basically all that means is when you have a saw wave, you just right click down here in the phases and hit randomize all, and it defases it. And it kind of gives it this like nice fuzziness. I'm also adding some unison and some EQ. Uh, but basically EQ3 is, is creating this big notch between 112 and 907 hertz with a 48 decibel active slope. So that's, this is how it sounds unfiltered, basically. Uh, also, if you'll notice, if I zoom in, I have the first harmonic, which is the fundamental, removed completely. And that is so I can use these as unison, but use a solid non-unison sub as a sine wave. And then there's this other layer, which is the Reese part. Sounds kind of crappy on its own, but this is really substantial for the, the coherency and the texture of the, the bass sound. And this Reese is really just made with a saw wave, a sine wave, and noise that I'm using distortion to kind of clip together, among a couple other effects. But here's how it sounds unaffected, and also no Ableton effects either. Hyperdimension, add a little bit of fast course in the top end to then saturate with asymmetrical distortion. And then I got this EQ, which is cutting out some of the mids in like the 200, 300 area to just like prevent mud. Layered together, you get this really full sound, but that's not the end of it. I'm using M cabinet, it's a Melda plugin which kind of introduces like a nice speaker cabinet kind of tone, kind of softening up and deharshing the edginess after the distortion of that. And then I'm using EQ8. I'm high passing at uh, like 84 hertz because this other serum is holding down the sub. So I don't actually need that, but I'm also using a second um, resonant high pass filter to introduce just harmonic movement and it also changes the phase which kind of translates as pitch. So observe the low end in the spectrum versus without. So we have these little bumps here that, that get formed around 100 hertz and that kind of it just gives it like a nice kind of rhythm to it. I also have these intermittent basses, and these are really from A Million Miles and Activate. These are just bass samples. They're pretty blurry and messy with uh, all the effects off. I'm stretching them out and, and changing the pitch of them. These are kind of just fitting in between the main pad bass. I'm layering it with these alias glitches. And that really takes these to the next level. And this is just a bass jam that sounds like this. How I made this alias glitch sound, I could just try to recreate this real quick. I used operator, used the sine wave, and used fixed mode, turned the multi up to 10. And then I set the LFO to high. Increase the rate all the way and the amount all the way. And then turn this frequency all the way up so I'm just maxing out the oscillator frequency and then I'm adjusting the LFO rate. So 
so you get anything in between these like dissonant kind of glassy digital sounds up here that are very steppy all the way down to the more wet scratchy sounds and now the chords these are basically the chords and uh, they're pretty similar i don't need to actually add the root note to these chords because the bass holds it down so much and if i layer these together you'll really be able to hear like how solid of a combination these uh these are This chord pad doesn't need to be a super loud, prominent thing. I feel like in a lot of melodic bass music, the chords are really excessive when really all they're doing is creating a harmonic foundation for whatever the lead is, whether it's a vocal or whether it is um, an actual synth lead. If you're struggling trying to find fullness in your drop chords, the solution might actually be do something else with your bass, add another layer to your bass because that fills out all of these high frequencies. And that's what's really kind of giving the illusion that this is like a giant chord stack. It's mostly the bass is what comes in in this part. This fake guitar that I made with steam pipe. Basically, it is simulating a dampened string that I'm able to modulate with the, uh, the mod wheel. The majority of the guitar tone really comes from the distortion and the cabinet that it's, uh, that it's played through. And then all put together. It just, yeah, adds, adds to the energy, kind of fills in that mid-range stuff in the, in the sides. I'm using Omnisphere for these chord pads kind of string-like. Uh, I'm using Lush Supersol Pad 1, and I also adjusted some of the unison settings. Then I got this vocal pad, but I am using the phaser that I made. This is just two EQs with these peaks and valleys that are macroed, and it kind of gives it like this subtle but rising effect. I love four chord progressions, but I also really love eight chord progressions. One, six, three, seven. And I am duplicating that again, but I am starting on the five instead of the one. And it just kind of extends the emotional journey over the course of these eight bars. And then everything cuts out. I am using a Redux, which is a sample reducer. And that is how I'm getting this digitized sweep down effect. All of a sudden, everything cuts out and then the vocal comes back in. It's not which in the original song, in my opinion, is like the most climactic moment of the whole song. You think the song is done after that chill bridge and then BAM, it comes all back. And I really wanted to emphasize that even more with a huge impact and then snare rise. A little bit of auto pan, increasing, automating up the, the treble. I'm using pitch bend to pitch these up. I wanted, to, I wanted to kind of bring it back with this like old school, like hands up, hard dance style. Just following the progression. And then the offbeat trance bass. I'm using the flip warp mode, kind of like pulse width modulation. I'm introducing square lead ripper lead, which is made with Dune. It's basically a square wave and a detuned saw wave that is being distorted together with the overdrive mode, which I think is just a wickedly awesome sound. And then I'm bringing the clap sample back in, rising it up even more. And then I'm using the basses from the dubstep drop. And I have this 16th note side trance bass. And then I do this hard style ish kick fill. We get the snare, da 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 da. And then the actual operator patch. It's a saw wave detuned with the sine wave. 
And then, yeah, it kind of just goes through this big chain of effects. This low pass saw wave, add erosion, adds noise, saturator, EQ8 cutting out some of the low mids, multiband dynamics stabilizing and also adding some phase shift so that when it's saturated again, we get these notches in the frequency spectrum, then EQ3 functioning as dispersion, more multiband, EQ8 kind of cutting off some of the air, and then another saturator, and then hybrid reverb, adding a little bit of width, more multiband. EQ8 creating this really deep notch, mm, and that's what kind of gives it like that beefiness. And then another saturator, and then lastly, I am using this parallel rack, dry, and then this phaser which is moving the center frequency around and going into an overdrive. This is kind of like a modern take on the old school hard style kick. And then this little zappy thing right here, that is a sine wave. And LFO1 is modulating the coarse frequencies. And then it's a saw wave going into a high pass filter kind of give that top end. I got these tops. These are actually from my song Escape. Yeah, basically when it goes into the dubstep part again, which is for the last part of the drop, I decided to just keep these 16th note hats going. And it just like adds to the energy. This is just like full on maxed out, crazy next level energy mode. <laughs> And I add the little cheerleader vocal back in. Really what this is, is two square waves. Basically being modulated in the same way that the other lead was, I'm using chaos and noise overdrive. Some reverb. Multiband. And then another M cabinet to, I don't know, make it a little bit softer in the top end. And then I'm using spectral compressor, kind of get out this like, really ringy frequency at around 2K. Oh yeah, and then this last bass articulation right here, I'm using utility to articulate this. Da, 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 da. And everything goes through a tape stop at the very end. It creates this a very abrupt pitch down effect. Uh, I found that the original song stopped super abruptly and I really like the vibe of that. This is just an excerpt of the full 46 minute project walkthrough that can be found in my sound design masterclass, The School of Bass. The course also includes a bunch of other project walkthroughs as well as numerous techniques that I use for creating, composing, sound designing, and completing full productions. So if you're interested in my sound design masterclass, The School of Bass, check the link in the description. Anyway, see you next time. Peace. It's not